Yep, it's another preparation video. So I've got a few different things to my kit this time, and that's why I want to make the video, really. Um, I have a, a trip planned with my friend Doug. We're going to go up and do 35 kilometers in Algonquin Park in a couple days uh, on a backpacking loop. 35 kilometers is equal to around roughly 22 miles. So the plan is we're going to drive there all day. It's going to take a while to get there. We won't get there until like 5 o'clock at, at night. We're going to walk in for about 3-4 hours set up, and then the next day is going to be our big day. It's going to be our full day. So we're going to hike that day all day, probably eight, nine hours, uh, and then camp that night, and then just walk about five kilometers out to the, uh, to the car the next morning and leave. So this is an ideal weather backpacking trip, and that's why things are a bit different. So let's go through it. Clothes, first off. I'm bringing one pair of Under Armour uh, underwear. They're like a poly, poly, I don't know, that fake stuff that Under Armour uses. I like it. It breathes well. Um, one merino, thin merino hoodie, uh, it's a Mountain Equipment Co-op brand. One pair of thick socks, thicker hiking socks. That's all the clothes I'm bringing at all, not including what's on my body. What I'm wearing is a polyester top, just a t-shirt, pair of thin, small, uh, ankle high merino socks. This isn't a first for me. I want to be able to dry my socks out and have thin socks. It seems like the ideal way to go. So that's what I'm wearing in another pair of Under Armour underwear. And these pants, which are a cotton poly blend or a cotton nylon blend, but they have the, the capability of zipping off into shorts. And on my last backpacking trip with Kyle uh, in West Virginia, I was rolling my pants up so that I could wear them like shorts because I really needed the ventilation. These are going to zip off probably halfway through the, the second day, even if not before that. Um, it's going to be like 70 degrees in the daytime, so I'm going to be warm, and that's why I'm bringing these as opposed to, I have a lighter pair, a North Face nylon pair of pants, but they don't zip off, and I really think that I'm going to want the shorts, so that's it. That's my clothes, period. I have one Primloft jacket, my light Primloft jacket that you see me wear all the time. I would not go without this. So every article of clothing is done. I'm not bringing rain gear. It's not predicted to rain. The second night has a 30% chance of rain at night. I don't care. I'm not bringing rain gear at all. Um, sleeping. I have my Astro Airlight, my, my Nemo Astro Airlight pad. I'm gonna put the. I'm gonna put everything in my gear list in the links in the description below, and I'm gonna put weights next to it this time. Uh, I've kind of actually been liking doing that, so uh, researching it and, and uh, documenting it. So I'm going to put it there just in case anybody has any questions about it. Nemo Master Airlight sleeping pad. For shelter, I'm bringing this small bag, a small uh, nylon bag, and all it has in it is my 5 foot by 7 foot Bushcraft Outfitters Mest tarp. Very, very, very small. Compared to a Nalgene, it's a quarter of the size. That's my shelter. I have an 8 foot hand paracord wrapped around it, tying it together. Also in this bag I have probably 20 feet of white paracord to hang my bear bag. And I have probably 20 feet of this reflective cord, smaller, smaller in diameter and way lighter than paracord, but this is the only piece I have. So that's why I'm bringing some paracord as well. So shelter is taken care of. Sleeping bag is going to be my positive 3 Celsius down bag, also from Mountain Equipment Co-op. I've used this a lot in the past. It's losing down, it's, it's losing its warmth, but in Celsius at night, the first night is supposed to be positive four, second night is supposed to be like nine or 10, so I'm, I'm good with that. I, I am bringing a liner, a sleeping bag liner. It's just this crappy little one to add maybe a little bit of warmth. And in all honesty, I probably don't need it, and it's probably not gonna add anything, but for the weight and the size. I have tons of room in my backpack. It's staying in there. Uh, what else? Okay. Camera. GoPro Hero Silver 4 with this tiny little tripod. That's it. And then I have um, an extra GoPro battery. I have all these little Ziploc bags containing my stuff. I have an extra little GoPro battery and this hat attachment that attaches to the broom of a baseball cap, which I will be wearing a baseball cap this time. No two. So that's camera stuff all figured out. Let's 
Let's go through these little bags. So I have uh, all these little bags that are going to go into one bigger mesh bag, but I, I, I separated them so I don't not rummaging through it and having to find stuff. So this is my first aid and my patch kit. Hopefully I not have to use it at all. It's gonna go at the bottom of the bag. This is normal toilet paper. These are wet wipes. A combination of the two is my preferred method. These are two uh, bread bags rolled up into a, a into a snack bag here. What I'm gonna do at night is when I get to camp because my feet are gonna get soaked, take off my shoes, take off my socks, dry my feet, slide these on, put my shoes back on, that way I can walk around camp without fear of getting something on my feet, or stabbing me on my feet, I mean, um, or without having to put my sh feet back into wet uh, shoes, which isn't fun. So those weigh nothing, and that's gonna be a lifesaver. I have hand sanitizer, floss sticks, and chapstick. Aqua Mira drops, they're the Canadian version, they're actually called Pristine. But that's what we're using for water purification. Doug and I are going to use both of these. That's it for that. So all these little little bags get put together in one mesh bag, and it, it's compact. It's all together. It's all good. So let's do food. I bought a dehydrator yesterday, um, and I'm so glad I did. No more Mountain House crap. The last time we did that trip, uh, Kyle and I went to West Virginia. I had I had a crazy IBS attack. I have IBS, but it was brought on, I think, by Mountain House uh, meals. There's so much sodium nitrate in that, and plus we're eating pepperoni with nitrates in it and stuff. Um, just not good for you. It doesn't taste good. It's expensive. I'm not an advocate of Mountain House. I'm sorry. It's just not what it is for me. But I am an advocate of making your own dehydrated food. So in the past, I've used it. Kyle has uh, made them. My other friend Ken's made them for me. But I bought my own this time. So this is ground pork, rice, green beans, carrots, peas, wild onions that I picked, and a couple other veggies in there. And then in this one I have Montreal steak spice, and this one I have um, Lowry's seasoning. And I just put a little piece of tape on there to, to identify it. So supper and supper for two nights. Um, for snacks uh, and, on, and lunch and on the trail, I have a half a little brick of Havarti roasted garlic um, cheese. I have three sticks of, of turkey pepperoni stick. Um, and then snacks, I have these little fruit uh, roll-up things. In the future, I'll be making my own fruit roll-ups, but I just didn't have time this time. So I have two skinny ones and one thick one. I have a package of Crystal Light. Now, what I'm showing you, the snacks, are all staying together. I'll finish the snacks first. I, I, I figured in the past I've wanted savory things like barbecue chips and stuff when I'm backpacking. So I went to the bulk barn and I got um, uh, party mix, which has got like ringolos, cheesies, pretzels, some uh, Fritos, stuff like that in there. I have one of those in my snack bag. I have a mint chocolate. I have dark chocolate covered almonds. So all of this stuff that I showed you is going to go in one separate um, snack bag that's going to stay at the top of my pack so I can access it easily whatever I want on the trail in the crystal light for on the trail when I'm getting my water. Now in my other food bag, these are both tiny little minuscule still nylon or mesh bags, they don't weigh anything. My other food bag, I'm not going to have to access until nighttime or in the morning depending, so I don't need it readily access accessible in my pack, so it can go at the bottom, whatever. I have those two meals for supper. I have four packs of oatmeal, two for each morning. I have another one of those chips that I'll snack around the fire. I have my spork. I have two teas. And I have another crystal light thing. Also, I have, I wasn't going to do it, but <laughs> I, I want to. So I brought a little bit of whiskey this time. I, I swore I'm done drinking when I'm camping because it doesn't, it makes me not sleep well and all that. But this is 200 mils of uh, whiskey that's made in my city. It's uh, not much, you know what I mean? Two swigs out of it each night and I'll just feel a little bit better. So that's, that's what I'm gonna go with booze wise. No liter this time, it's just too much. So that'll all go in a second uh, bag, like I was saying. For water this time, I, go, I went with a Dasani uh, one liter disposable water bottle as opposed to an Nalgene. I do have an Nalgene here. I'm not bringing it, but I put it in my weight, in my bag for weight. Man, those dogs. Put it in my bag for weight to take up um, 
what I'm going to be using, which is a soft-sided platypus uh, water bottle. I have also a headlamp, a tiny little book where I'm going to keep notes with a little small pencil, and this is new as well. So my cook kit, my cook kit, or my sorry, my pot has always been my titanium snow peak pot. It works well. But last time I used my, my pocket rocket, and while I liked having the idea, the idea of having my own stove and not relying on one of my camping partners to use their stove or fire, I didn't like carrying the canister. The canister is ridiculously heavy. Um, if you use all of the fuel, fluid or fuel in the canister, you can't throw it away, you can't burn it, you have to carry it still. And if you don't use it all, you're carrying around unused fuel. So I'm going to go with the cat stove. It's old hat to a lot of people. But to me, I've never had one before that's worked well, and I think that was because of the windscreen. So in my titanium Snow Peak Solo uh, pot, fits my whole cook kit. The new lid can fit on it, and I just have a elastic band around the top to hold it all still in my pack. So my cook kit consists of a cat stove that I made with a hole punch. Everybody knows how to do that. A windscreen from my Etowa stove, which I did not like, and fuel for more than four days. But I'm not going for that long. I just I'm gonna have extra fuel in case. This is um, denatured alcohol. It all fits in my stove in my pot, and it's all good. And sorry, a small bit lighter. And uh, a couple other things that I'm gonna be bringing, uh, as always, my Reflectix with my blue foam pad. Okay, so that's gonna. Oh, and sorry, my backpack is a Mech a Mountain Equipment Co-op Spirit 40 liter. On my last trip, I think I said it was a 30 liter. It's definitely a 40 liter. Says it right on it. So, again, packing. My reflective goes right on the back, and this time I'm not putting my sleeping bag in a in a um, a compression sack. I, I found out by just testing it around here at home. I don't need to. I, I have more than enough room in my backpack this time uh, because I'm going so lightweight that I don't need to put it in a compression sack to actually keep it uh, a good size. So I'm literally just stuffing it in to the bottom and then the next thing I'll put in is the, the sleeping bag liner. Uh, just again stuffing it in. So then from there on would be the sleeping pad, my my nest and my paracord will go in that bag. And the, um, the reflective cord as well will go in that bag. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is just so it all stays together. The bag's not necessary, but I figure if, if I have my whole shelter set up in one bag, it's, it's easier. Um, oh, my, my food bags are, look like this. Now, so this is my supper bag that I can leave. It's my supper and breakfast bag that I can leave farther down in my pack. This is my snack bag that's going to stay on the top. This is all those little Ziploc uh, odds and end bag that hopefully they don't have to use at all. So that can go in far, uh, farther as well. And then after that, really, it's um, it's just the clothes that I'm bringing. My shirt, my underwear, my socks. Are just going in loose. I'm not putting a white track compactor bag uh, liner in this time because I don't need it. It's not going to rain. Um, my cook kit, and that's it. Oh, sorry, my creme lock, and that's it. So I have a ton of room. I'm going to put my food, my snack food, in the top. I'm going to put my notepad. I, I, I'm going to keep notes. I've been uh, writing down good ideas and what works and stuff recently so that's going in the top in the little zipper part as well as my headland and that's it for that. The Aquamira drops, the, uh, the pristine drops are going in this front pouch, easy access, zip it up. My GoPro is going to be my hand most of the time but until then it's just going to slid down in the front. My water is on the side and then just for for uh, sake of weighing and, and all that stuff, this is gonna my analogy is gonna go on this side, but this is where my my platypus uh, soft water bottle is gonna go. 
it's also one liter, so it'll be around the same weight. It'll be a lesser weight because it's not as heavy as an Nalgene. Just the uh, last thing, shoes are my Montreal Trail Runners. Again, these are tried and true for me now, so they're all banged up and, and dirty, but they're no, no worse for wear. Full mesh on the top. Uh, the soles have this like almost water repelling bottom, which I really like. The tops get soaked, but the bottoms seem to stay relatively dry. They dry easy, they come in and out easy, which is important. I'll be drying these every day. Um, one hiking pole, this is a McKinley hiking pole. My sunglasses and just a baseball hat. So here's a look at our route. Coming in off Highway 60, here's the trailhead. We walk 3.8 clicks to that marker down half to the 6.9 clicks, so we're walking about roughly 8 kilometers. We're going to camp on the uh, east side of Provoking Lake, preferably the last site of Provoking Lake. The next day in the morning, we're going to get up, hike down here, all the way here, boom, 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 back up to Provoking Lake, camp on the west side of Provoking Lake uh, that night, and then in the next morning, we'll just have like a 5 kilometer jaunt back to the car and we're out. So I just got back from the vet with Scout. He had to go for his annual checkup and annual robbery for me. But when I was there, I decided to bring my backpack. I weighed everything separately, but I wanted to know the exact weight of everything. Backpack, food, water, everything all in. It weighs up at 17.21 pounds. And I am ecstatic about that. I've never had a bag this light. Um, the trail we're doing is, is moderate to extreme, up, down, lots of stuff like that. So I, a, a light bag is really good. I'm pumped, man. I can't wait. So hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. Maybe you learned something. Stay tuned. There will be a video for the trip. Thanks for watching. I'm making a video. Oh, okay.